Here we go. All right. Hi, Sandy Sembler. Hi, beautiful. We're Hi. both having better, better hair days this week, aren't we? <laughs> yeah. Good to see you, my sweet friend. Good to see you. And I, I love that you're in Asheville, North Carolina. Actually, we're in Beach Mountain, which is, I, I, I have found out that it is the, it's the coolest place on the East Coast. So that's oh. another why John chose it. Um, because it is. I mean, it's it hasn't gotten out of like 72 years since we've been here. Wow, it's so beautiful. Your background and seeing all the deers behind you, that's so beautiful. Yeah, it's been it's been really, really, really. So there's like these two baby fawns that come and just kind of hang out here and our puppy will, will just kind of watch and they they kind of do this weird thing with their head, kind of playing with each other. It's, it's wild. It's so <laughs> cute. You got to video some of that. Get an animal. Oh, I, I, I will, I will for sure. For sure. So it's good to see you. Thank you. It was. It's been a big week. I know you had a big week since I, since we last talked. Yeah. Well, I love that video you sent of John, talking about how he puts you. You put using your feminine energy to put him in his masculine and to make him real. He really feels like a man. I love that. It's so beautifully yeah. put. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, I I asked him to make that because so many women that I work with. Um, Think they're too much, and they think all the good men are gone, and they think that um, you know they need to modulate to become smaller, so they don't want a man off, and you know, or they need to be with a man who's already been doing this kind of deep work. And the truth is, that's not true. John right. had not done this work before the, the embodiment, conscious work, but he already embodied the ability there. So I asked him if he'd make that for some of my beautiful clients that. Um, Quite frankly, this is just it's just a, a, a disempowering belief, right? And so I asked him to do that. And it really is in fact, I mean, our our relationship, like all of our relationships are a petri dish for growth, petri dish for spiritual development. And you know, one of our teachers, David Data, talks about the best spiritual practice is to be in a monogamous relationship where you're open to like that level of three communication where you're always revealing and responding. Uh, with an open heart and an open heart is, is the key. I love that. That's so beautiful. And do you have any tips for people on how to be in your heart and be, have an open heart? Do you like tap in and think your heart? I open my heart to everyone and everything. Is that how you kind of invoke okay, your heart? That's, that is, that's beautiful. And that, that can work up to a certain point, but the way I, I like to take it is honestly to really embody like what that would feel like to walk with an open heart. Who do I need to be to invoke a conscious relationship with my partner or a conscious relationship with my friend? And so you invoke that and you embody what that would be like. So if I want to embody open heartedness, I have to imagine, you know, yes, I can pray it in, but I also need to be able to actually feel it here as well. And so to have practices to be able to get in your heart. So sometimes that literally can mean. Um, you know, the practice that I, I did in the beginning when I was learning how to break myself open was to literally lie on my back with like a yoga block behind me and open my heart out like this. You imagine like you're being connected to sunshine to, to like to source, right? Um, so yeah, and, and also to surround yourself with people that actually see your heart, that know your heart. And oh. if you're not walking congruently, kind of like when you and I did that movie meditation a few weeks ago, I mean, you, know, you shared a story and I asked if you were for the feedback. I mean, are we in relationship with people that actually see our heart and know who we are and they're actually willing to invoke that by saying, hey, and go in there. Um, I mean, what John was referring to um, for, the, for the audience here is, you know, you, you were John did the video based on how a woman can sting us, can sting them back to consciousness. And my belief is, and what I've learned from teachers, is that in our feminine, we actually can um, bring out the best in, in the masculine. So that can even be the same as same-sex relationships. But since I'm married to John, I can I'll use that as an example to keep it simple for me to explain, is you know, when, I, when I feel like he's disconnected from, from himself or um, me or what have you, you know, there are ways that I will bring him back. And it, can, it, it is like a sting. It's a sting. And sometimes that can be like by my movement. Sometimes it can be like, like wake up, you know, whatever that is. And uh, because I know the world's better for John to be more conscious, right? 
Um, just like he'll do the same thing for me if he feels like I'm not in my heart. That um, that I believe there's a way that we can respond um, with an open heart, and there's also a way that we can respond without being open-hearted. For example, um, I know you and I have talked about that, maybe not here, but um, what that video talked about too is that how a man can hold space for us, right? And hold space for us in the sense of allowing us to feel all of our, all of our emotions. So many women will modulate not wanting to be too much, and so they put themselves in a box. And then I like to use the term whackable. And so they're feeling these emotions, and if they don't allow themselves to express them, then they come up um, as illness or, you know, cancer or rage or, um, you know, feeling less than or whatever the, the, the flavor of the moment is. And so the more we can get in touch with our feelings, the better. So it's abusive if a woman is going to um, rage, and, and rage and, and invite a man to hold the container for her as she's expressing herself. But if it's not with an open heart, it's abusive. And so there's a lot of people that teach embodiment work that, that will tell the man to stand there like a tree trunk and, you know, with linear, which is very trustable, by the way. Now, as you start watching men out there, a man that's slumped over, a man that doesn't hold himself up erect, a man who's not breathing, basically from the diaphragm, they, they will appear primarily to us to be less trustable. And so um, there's a way that they can actually receive more from us when we're open hearted. And so what I like to do is, um, and what I do in my own relationship is like, I trained John to know the difference with me. And I, you know, and we have a relationship where he will, he'll do something when I am in that state um, to get me back into my heart. Sometimes it will be, you know, he'll come over and twirl me around. Sometimes he'll literally just be like, you know, sometimes he'll say enough. Um, and sometimes, oh, wow. Yeah, sometimes he like, he'll pick me up and throw me over his shoulder. Um, there's, I mean, there's, there's, <laughs> that sounds fun. It is fun. I mean, relationships don't have to be so hard, even when we're going through hard times. Um, and, but this takes practice and this is why it's really important to, um, you know, be practiced. And so we, we practice to get ready for those moments when I'm not in my heart, we get practice for those moments. Like yesterday I was feeling really crunchy and, um, you know, going through menopause and I was just feeling fat, yucky, gross. You know, I had several clients that, that, you know, that moved their appointments and I had scheduled the whole day to be coaching so I could have some free days this week to go hiking. So I was just like irritable. And I started taking it out on John and then John wouldn't have it. He's like, nope. And he did this little fun thing like to, and I, and I laughed. And so I went outside and I just, I did a moving meditation and I danced to some really gritty music that got me like really embodied so I can move that through my body and I could get really, you know, just move it through. And it felt so good to acknowledge that I felt that way versus pretending like I don't, um, right? And to be able to respond to whatever's coming up for me. Now, that doesn't mean that I want to live in the aggravation. It doesn't mean I want to live in the feeling, but it is great to let it move through your body for sure. That's beautiful. That's so beautifully put. And so what about the reverse? Like, so... What do you mean? If he's in an irritable or he's, you do the same back, you. Oh, yeah, that's fun. Um, that's even more fun. I mean, when John, when he's irritable, he gets hungry, like hangry. And um, that's really the only Angry. John, John's <laughs> even Steven, um, which I don't always love. I mean, I'm wanting energy, right? I want, I need, the feminine wants more energy. We are energy. So there are times that I will. So I will, you know, I'll poke at him or I'll, I may crawl on the floor or I may, um, I mean, I also notice and leave him alone sometimes until he'll come back. But, you know, I'll just, there's a way that we can embody that without criticizing him. But most women do, they'll start criticizing the men in their life, thinking that that's going to change them, including our sons. I mean, there's something really fun about learning how to show, uh, to show more without saying more. Yeah. Uh, Cameron, my son, now, if, if I don't hear from him, you know, for a couple of days um, or a couple of weeks, really, if he's in college, I'll send him a, I'll send him a video or I'll FaceTime him. If he doesn't pick up, um, I'll send him a video and I'll be like, <laughs> and then he goes like, mom's sad versus the way I used to do it, which was, why have you called me? I miss you. And, you know, we, and which isn't an invitation, you know, for me, I want. I want to be an invitation for a yes. 
and a yes for more abundance, a yes for you know um, me choosing this client who I, who I know they're better for the world because they're working with me. Um, I mean, you know what I mean? I just, I really want to be an invitation for John to know that he can trust me an invitation, not just for intimacy, um, but also like physical intimacy, but I mean like emotional intimacy. I want to yeah. be an invitation for you um, as a friend. And so that means I need to be practiced. So when those moments do come up, it's like, it's real. So our brain doesn't know the difference between what's real or not, which is why a lot of times I'll use um, video to have someone do sacred theater or do something to act as if it's real. So when that moment does come up later that they're, that they're already so embodied that it becomes real. So I'll role play with them as if I was their partner. Like what would it look like if your partner's in a bad mood? Can we just pretend like I'm your partner? And then we role play that out. And she may be like, I don't want to do that. That's too embarrassing. But when, she, <laughs> but when she learns to reveal and respond to the work that we're doing together, then you better believe she's, she likes the way her body feels and her mind or everything else, and she'll bring that to her man. And that's that's pretty awesome, right? That's so awesome. I love <laughs> that. I, I look forward to working with you even more with yeah. your coaching and that program that you do. Oh, my God. I'm so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm taking applications now for the next Sacred She and you know, we're doing a little mini um, embodiment workshop tonight with clients and where we do music to this day, where I know you love music like I do. I um, love music. But since I've become more embodied, the music that I may listen to in the car that it likes me is going to be different than the music I use for, the, for embodiment practices. And you got a flavor of that in that one meditation that we, we did together, where music that normally may piss you off, like, oh, there's a lot of <laughs> like, wait a minute, my body kind of like that. And um, so I love to bring people into this music tasting because they um, they are shocked at what actually brings them a lot of pleasure. And so it's for me, it's just fun to witness people having their aha moments. I mean, um, I we, we were talking about revealing and responding, you know, uh, and you're very, I mean, I've known you forever. You're, you're so responsive and you're so feminine and you i mean there's no doubt we somebody could literally be watching this without sound and they would be able to feel our energy right um <laughs> and because we're always transmitting but remember in pretty woman whenever uh richard gear i can't remember his character's name but her name was vivian when he when he gave her that that necklace and she had the beautiful red dress on and that do you remember that yeah yeah it, and it she was, was like oh and, 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 it, and he's because he snapped it yeah, yeah. Well, I found out that that, and she was so responsive to the gift, right? That she squealed, and I call that the squeal factor. Um, what's so interesting about that is I found out that she that that was not even planned. That that was something that he did. You know, he he just he just did to surprise her. They kept it in the movie because it was such a beautiful expression of you know of revealing and responding. And so I actually have some of the girls with I'm with now have watching that movie so they can count how many times did she open hearted. Not manipulative, yeah, but we really open hearted to she respond to his gifts. And so, you know, because there's a revealing and responding we're all always doing. And can we can we really just be responsive to life? Can we be like, I mean, be excited that, oh, you know, here I get to see you every week. Great. And actually embody that joy and excitement. And imagine what happens when your partner gives you a gift and you're like, eh, oh, 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 thanks. <laughs> Or is it like, wow? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure you've asked people to be guests on your show and they didn't really seem appreciative about it, didn't respond and the energy's off. And so why do we, and the old me would have kept, I mean, let's consider you were like a, a partner. If you were a partner that I had to cry you open to get a, to, to even respond to you, you would have been like my number one choice. But I've rewired my nervous system, so I no longer want that. I want to be in partnership with friends and business and, of course, my husband, where um, they actually get jazzed by my by my response, right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. I love it. I mean, yeah. even being excited about a little thing like a flower, like I write in my gratitude um, journal every day flowers and literally every day flowers are blooming outside everywhere I go or I get flowers or someone brings a plant. I have a friend that works for a flower company and the other day she gave me 10 plants and flowers. And I, really? yeah, it's just 
you man, I manifest it faster and faster by being grateful. And I'm so like, wow, thank you so much. And That's continuing so cool. to thank yeah. you. And so I understand that feeling that you're talking about. And yeah, I mean, just, just seeing the difference when you're like, you, I mean, yes, we can. And I'm not saying I have a gratitude journal too, to not do your gratitude journal, but so like you're writing it down. <laughs> drawing the flowers, whatever. But if you can actually literally be the flower, like oh, I am a sunflower, you know, I am this hibiscus, I am, you know, whatever it is. And it, I mean, it, it sounds so extreme and it is because I think that we can actually live like that. And so, but again, to train ourselves to be more embodied that yes, it's great to write everything down, but that's in our head. What if you've actually allowed yourself when you are writing it down that you imagine yourself like, being the flower or it's 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 just there's depth to that and what happens is is that you start attracting more of that in your life like 100 percent. yeah that's oh my god that's so beautiful and so that goes toward for everything like so you you want to attract your soulmate or the guy in your life or the man or woman yep. this is for men and women um to be what you want to see be the change that you want to see be that partner that you want to yes. have or share yeah. your life with well yeah and, it, and it's really um, i love that you brought that up i just actually one of the reasons why i was two minutes late to the call is i was with a client and she's a new client so we're doing her intake and you know she we find out she who needs to be like what is your deepest desire is it she who needs to be uh, and i mean me like needs to be claimed she who needs to be desired she who needs to be adored she who needs to be nurtured, she who needs to be saved. And then, so who do you need to be in order to attract that into your life? So who do you need to be to attract someone in your life that actually is going to like mooch off of you or someone who isn't going to, right? So we focus on who do you need to be in order to have your deepest desire. And we literally like, like use frequency and embodiment to make you that person. Um, and because so many women, especially when they sometimes when they come to me, they're, they're jaded and they think that there aren't any good men out there in the world. And so how do you show up believing that there's no good men out there? Closed, um, standoffish, rigid. Hmm. And and we are tuning for it. We're always transmitting. Um, an exercise I've started doing with clients is when they ask like how about their soulmate. I mean, I do manifestation exercises and theta and all these things and hypnosis. Um, but a very simple exercise is to simply close your eyes and, you know, for a woman to feel into her cervix and feel into her womb and feel into her body and imagine like where, where do you feel cold or where do you feel open? Where do you feel an invitation? And so the key is, is that you want to soften your body, the central column of your spine and soften yourself so you are an invitation because you're going to attract if someone likes a cold, a, a cold woman. Um, you may not think that you're cold, but you're going to attract that over and over and over again. So the key is to get embodied and breathe yourself in and, and soften. Yeah. Well, Maureen Williamson talks about that too. And a few, in a few books or movies, she talks about if you hate one woman, you hate them all. If you hate yep. one man, you hate them all. Yep. So she has an exercise that she says, just go on the street and practice loving every single man or woman that passes by you and and see the reflection of yourself in them. I remember the first time I learned that I went in a subway and I'm like, there's my punky side. There's my, there's uh -huh. my smart side. There's my super conservative side. There's my business side, you know? And I just it saw it. It's a great exercise. And I actually, when, when someone's doing the man cleanse, you know, under my guidance, I mean, it really is to, to view men, to change a relationship to the masculine. And so to view, see God in all of them. Like you said, see God in them, see the divine in them, see, and it, and it's amazing. And also the masculine in ourselves, you know, to see the masculine in ourselves and heal that relationship. Like, what do you love about your masculine side? What, what does your masculine give you the freedom to do? You know, what structure are you giving yourself? And it's just amazing how we've been trained as we have learned to um, masculinize, masculinize women and become more and more like men that we've actually, um, you know, taken away that soft side. And the truth is, is that we, as women, are so powerful. 
um, and learning how to weave it in, in and out. But it takes practice because, you know, I've been I've been doing this work now for like what, eight years or so. But I had to tease apart 42 years of programming. And even before that, you have all, you, all you have everything in your DNA. So um, it's just beautiful. It's also helpful to be for women to be in women's circles, to be around women that actually invite and evoke um, emotion and and love and um, you not miss the, the BS of life. Yeah. And OK, so that brings up a point. So when you're around friends that are going through a hard time with a guy or a relationship and they start male bashing, do you walk away or do you change the subject? Do you try to direct them, guide them into seeing what they do love about that person? We've been there before. <laughs> yes. Not, so. that long ago. <laughs> not, not that long ago. Um, I, I honestly don't have friends, number one, that I can't do like what you and I did. I mean, where I could say, hey, you know, are you, are you open to a reflection? Yeah. And, and then, and then I go to that level three, like I will say, you know, are you open to a reflection and, um, you know, have you thought about maybe how you're showing up, not condoning his behavior, but have you thought about who you're showing up and we, and we can go. And I, and I really, for me, I, I do, I really try hard not to coach my friends, but to give a reflection because that's it was just like you would do for me. So number one, I, I don't have people in my life that I can't do that with. I mean, honestly, I, do, I don't anymore. Um, and but if I'm in a, a, a situation where it's a bigger group, um, I it just depends. I, I generally won't go there unless actually that's not true. I even did a Bible study, Bible study a couple months ago. When we actually were meeting live. Someone said something that was very black and white. And I, I said, you know, I, I did the four questions. Is that true? Is it really true? And 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 then I said, how, how do you show up believing that thought? And then who do you need to be? And it was, oh, it was about arranged marriages. She was talking about how arranged marriages do not work and this and this and this. And I had just gotten off of, oh yeah, I had just gotten off of a weekend with, um, with, at, with Donnie Epstein and I had met this beautiful couple that were in arranged marriage for 35 years, met their kids. And I mean, she admitted it was not easy at first, but she learned to love. And they're, they, you know, they're in faith and all they're Christians and what have you. And, and I recognize, I kind of like, I'm, I'm the different Bible study girl for sure now. But, um, <laughs> but when I asked that question, it wasn't to be a front of, but I believe that I want to be in situations where we allow ourselves to think a little deeper and a little broader because they are doing so much good in the world. And so if I, if she believes that thought that all arranged marriages are hokey or they don't work, that's just BS. So I'm going to take that back. I think for me, I'll pray into it real quick. And like, God, just, you know, show me how I love myself and them unconditionally. This is not something that, that is in your will for my best and highest good of grace and ease, like kill it, destroy it, make it not be. And if I have the feeling like I need to say something, I will. Otherwise I've learned to put the duct tape on my mouth and just, <laughs> yeah. Honor where they're at. By the way, the sun is so beautiful, shining on backlighting your hair and the deer yeah, behind you is so beautiful. It, look, it looks like I have, thank you. It looks like I have one of those Zoom, um, the Zoom backgrounds on, doesn't it? Yeah, well, your real life in the woods. But, yeah, right. <laughs> and that your halo is shining through. I feel very luminous, yeah. luminescent, yeah. You're yes. radiant, you're yeah. radiant. So I'm looking yeah. forward to yeah, seeing you live, live soon. Yes, so we'll be live together on the 1st, and we are going to be here live every Tuesday at 10 o'clock, everyone that's listening. And yeah. if you have questions, please put them there for us. Yeah. We, we will get to them. Um, are there any other tips or points that we want to make today before we end? Beautiful, Sandy. Well, I, think, I think the thing is, is that we want to talk about responding. I mean, be, respond, be responsive to life and, and, and over exaggerate so you can train your nervous system to, to receive more and be more excited about whatever is being gifted. I mean, if it is you were gifted a flower or, you know, I mean, whatever it is, I mean, you've got great service at a restaurant or, I mean, just go overboard with, with and just do it with an open heart. You'll be amazed at how much more abundance and of, in all ways you'll, 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 You'll show, you'll show up. I mean, I, I love that pretty woman um, exercise that has somebody watch the movie and watch watch her. Because the neat thing is, is that you know, he, he, if you remember the movie, yeah. um, 
you know, I'm not saying that we need to, you know, um, allow ourselves to be prostitutes or anything. I don't want to get into that, that background, but just watch how she responds to him and versus the women that took for him. She responded and she was grateful and she saw good in him. And she actually, he actually sought out her advice because he saw her as, so I'm saying be mindful of where you're giving your energy, be mindful of the energy you're giving. And um, I just play that exercise of being responsive. It's, it's, it's beautiful. And then the right. next time, yeah. I mean, I'd love to hear people comment on that once you put this on the page or however you're doing this, because um, it's fascinating. It's so not the way that we're raising girls these days is to be, you know, to be, to be able to receive. And I think the amount, the quality of our life also is um, about, can we receive? You know, can we receive? If you and I were, um, you know, eye gazing right now and doing a receiving exercise, I would say, you know, I, you know, what I, what I love most about you right now is I see, and I would say whatever I see in you. And then I would, and then you would say, I received that. And we'd go back and forth for 10 or 12 minutes. Wow. So we, yeah, you can get it in your body, what it feels like for someone to really witness you. Um, and I think women need to do that more and more and more. So that's why I think women's circles versus women get togethers are important. Oh, I love that. That's so beautiful. I, I, have I shared the experience when I was with Reverend Mac, Michael Beckwith at, yeah. in Egypt? One of the hotels that we stayed at in Egypt on the um, the Red Sea, there was a casino in there. And you know how he's very in touch with energy and everything. And yeah. every night I kept saying, I'm following you around the casino. I want to win some money. And so <laughs> every morning at, at six, we would do meditation by the beach. And this one morning, and every night I ended up being too tired to go to the casino. I would just wasn't feeling it. I would go to bed because I wanted to wake up early for the meditation. And one morning him and his assistant took me aside and said, Charity, we have, where were you last night? We were looking for you everywhere, right? And I said, oh man, you guys went and I didn't go. And so they're like, guess what? He said, um, Lee won ten thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars or something and he I said and i won a hundred thousand or something and i was there like what yay jumping around being crazy <laughs> like that and they're just let it watching and i started grabbing other people and they're like no 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 charity this is just for you and then a few minutes later they let me go on for at least six or seven minutes and then they said we're just kidding but stay where you are stay in that state of winning 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 see because the universe knows no difference. Of 100%. That's the thing. And this monkey mind that we have doesn't know the difference either. So if you can respond to me, that's what I tell clients all the time. Like if you're going to make these sacred theater videos for me and, and, and knowing that like I'm your lover, then if you can reveal that to me as I help women you know, tease apart why they haven't been able to do this, and then they do, by the time they're able to, you know, they see their marriage is changing and blossoming. They see when they start dating again, you know, they're dating a different caliber of person, a man, um, and because they're, they're so much more responsive. So I love that, 100%. I mean, it's, yeah. and, that, and when I think about you, that's, I think about you that way. You're so excited for other people and their zest that I would say, I want you to be that excited about you and what you're doing and how creative you are. Oh, that's sweet. Um, have you ever done the exercise too, where you're sitting there with a man or woman and you're sending them so much love and you, you wonder if they can notice or feel it from your eyes or your heart? Like you imagine the divine coming through your heart, your eyes, your hands with pranic healing. You're a pranic healer too. And practicing and sending them love and see if they notice or feel it. I mean, you can tell they feel it, but it's so fun to do. When it, is, it, it is. It is. It's really fun to do um, when they when you're not like in a practice. Like John and I will sit together and practice and do things like that. Like you know, we'll do things like that. Um, yeah. Practice, or we're at workshops do that. But I mean, it's it's even more fun when they don't know. What you're doing. Yeah, yeah. When it's a complete stranger who you just met and you're like, you're the most beautiful thing in the world. I love you. I love you. I love you unconditionally. It's so cool to see. But yeah, when I tell people that you can completely change even the way you're negotiating a house, for example, and how you are showing up energetically and putting that out there, invoking. 
So, I mean, the people, I mean, that's life's happening for us, not to us. And it's just all this energy that we're putting out there. Yes. And I want to remind everyone listening too, don't believe a word we're saying. Try it. Test yeah, it. Absolutely. Put our words to a test. <laughs> Experiment with it. And, and like for a, a really easy baby step. If you're at a restaurant today or somewhere out in public and it's, it's going hairy, somebody's crabby around you, just start saying, I love you, thank you. I love you, thank you. And watch things change. Yeah. It really works. It does work. I mean, that, yeah, that it does work. It's so amazing how that just cuts that energy clean and changes it, right? I know. Oh, girl. Well, once again, this has been beautiful. Yes. I love you so much, my sister. I love you too, sweetheart. Enjoy the mountains, my where I was born. I love it up there. No, yeah, and let's let's talk off offline a little bit um, in a couple of days, okay? Before next week. Okay. 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 All right. Bye, everybody. There. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We love you. Leave Bye. your questions here. See you, babe. Bye. Hey, we can talk.